So today I'm willing to go through some Reddit things once again. Yes, I know, but I do find quite often that people are talking about things that I guess and believe and think are of importance and also relevant. So what is your favorite cognitive technique for maintaining peace of mind? Mine is called elimination of judgments. One should always keep in mind that events are interconnected through the operation of physical cause and effect. Thus, apparently, negative events can what precipitate. I don't even know what this means, but yeah. Positive events, and apparently positive events can precipitate negative events. Moreover, the connection between events can be very indirect and impossible to predict. Consequently, if one were able to go back in time and modify or eliminate a particular event, one's entire life might change as a result, and whether it would change for the better or for the worse would not be knowledgeable. Therefore, one will generally never know whether an apparently negative event is truly negative in the overall context of one's life, or whether an apparently positive event is truly positive in the overall context of one's life. And this is actually a concept that I think that I've been talking about before, and uh, for me at least, originated from Gary Vee, indeed. And yes, it is just the case, we will never ever know what would have happened. You know, being like, oh... Uh, I should have made this decision, I should have made this, and or that, and or these, and or those things, I will never know. I will never know if this actually benefited me in any fucking way, because maybe I, I don't know, would have been fucking hit by a bus. This could have happened, you know, maybe I would have actually died if events took place in, in this sequence, you know. For example, uh, me not breaking up, you know, what could have happened? I basically could have died for whatever the fuck reason, you know. It is theoretically possible and I will never know. I will never know if, if changing this decision and or altering the decision, if this would have actually made my life better or worse. I will never know. And so, first of all, thinking about it and kind of being just overly... Uh, Concern about that doesn't make any fucking sense. I will never know. Never ever will I know, you know, whether this is going to be the case or or not, whether it would have benefited me or not, whether it would have been just something bad or not. I will never know. And so thinking about it too much, you know, thinking about it per se, well, it is what it is, I'd say, but um, think about it too much is not going to be good. I remind myself I do not own anything but my mind, not even my body. Everything is borrowed and everything will be returned. I am simply grateful I get to borrow it. Why do you think you own, you own your mind? I am not sure what to think of it. No one of us know what consciousness is. I guess it makes sense in a way that we own the things we can control. You can control how you react to external events by using logic as is stoic practice. However, you can't really choose how your face looks or that your body decays as you get older. I mean, you can do something about it. You can do something about how you look and whatnot uh, by exercising, for example. But entirely, no, you know, you, you can't change your body structure. You can't change your bones. You can't change these things, you know. Maybe in the process of growing, you could by, you know, adding hormones and shit, I guess, as far as I know, at least. But yeah. Uh, was not perhaps too helpful in how to query you here. It is true, however, that Stoics believe you don't even control your own mind. For as long as your mind functions, they believe you only control your will, which is your intentions. The rest of the mind tends to realign with one's intentions, but of course, even this can be stopped by myriad processes. So Stoics focus only on control of their will, what they can with the rest, but never forgetting that it is the will that one must exert. Short, simple and sweet. Yeah, indeed. When an old farmer's stallion wins a prize at a country show, his neighbors, what? His neighbor calls round to congratulate him, but the old farmer says, who knows what is good and what is bad. The next day, some thieves come and steal his valuable animal. His neighbor comes to commiserate with him, but the old man replies, who knows what is good and what is bad.
A few days later, the spirited stallion escapes from the thieves and joined a herd of wild mares, leading them back to the farm. The neighbor calls to share the farmer's joy, but the farmer says, who knows what is good and what is bad. The following day, while trying to break in in one of the mares, the farmer's son is thrown and fractures his leg. The neighbor calls to share the farmer's sorrow, but the old man's attitude remains the same as before. The following week, the army passes. The army passes by, I'm sorry, forcibly conscripting soldiers for the war, but they do not take the farmer's son because he cannot walk. The neighbor thinks to himself, who knows what is good and what is bad, and realizes that the old farmer must be a Taoist sage. Traditional Taoist story. I think it is an amazing story. I know the story with the son that broke his leg and then didn't have to go to the army. Might I radically alter your perspective by introducing the Stoic concept of cause and effect? The Stoics were the first in recorded history to ever distinguish between cause and effect. The most people a causation oh to most people causation looks like a cascading series of causes which creates other causes. Effects aren't really distinct from other causes. But this is exactly why non-Stoics never created a, disti a distinction between cause and effect. For the Stoics, cause and effect were distinct phenomena. Causes created effects, but effects were not caused that created other effects. Everything that exists is a body, quote unquote. I prefer to use the term entity. People are entities. Birds are entities. Trees are entities. Rocks are entities. Entities exist. The actions of ent entities are causes which create effects. But the effects only change the appearance of other entities. They do not change their essence and therefore do not necessarily create other causes. The archetypical e example is a knife cutting you. The knife is an entity. You are an entity. The knife is the cause of the cut. Which makes sense. The effect is that your body has been cut. But Stoics do not think that effects determine other causes. You might think that the knife Cutting you caused you to cry out in pain and seek vengeance, but that was in your nat nature all along. You wouldn't have been in pain and sought vengeance for any number of other things. The knife wasn't a cause, it was merely a catalyst for you to act on your inner nature. Stoics counsel for fortitude. Stoics think that with training you don't have to cry out in pain. If a knife cuts you, seek aid and let it heal. The effect of the knife cutting you does not dictate your actions. Therefore, it does not, dis does not dictate further causes. Once you understand this concept, you will know that you can never go back in time to change the past. Focusing on the consequences of particular events is pointless, not because it couldn't have been otherwise, but because it couldn't possibly have been otherwise, not just because of what others did to you, but because of your actions. Life sucks. Stoicism can help. Stoicism isn't for you, so be it. One should absolutely not eliminate judgment about what is good or bad, perhaps as an exercise to overcome pre-justice or pre-judice. You can tempor temporarily eliminate judgment, but once you have an idea of what is genuinely good, good judgment, which is eubolia, is an essential component of wisdom, phronesis. Wisdom without judgment is not peace of mind. It is an avoidance of responsibility, which hurts more than it helps. I got a lot out of that, thanks. Minor point, but I think the Buddha preceded Seno and also clearly distinguished between cause and effect. Kama, Kama, Vipaka. From what I'm reading, Kama, Vipaka is the result of Kama, but also a kind of Kama. There is not a clear distinction between cause and effect. Wait, blah, 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 blah. People discuss... <laughs> People discussing history and the stuff there. Thank you. I apply the technique often for particular events slash experiences and occasionally I meditate on it. If you would like to see many more cognitive techniques for maintaining peace of mind, check out pages 7 to 11 of My Philosophy of Life. I do wonder... Philosopher123wordpress.com He said 7 to... Well, I just... I, I just don't know. 
Uh, I know I was wrong to do many of the things I've done in the past. Yes, I will continue to feel bad about them. Yes, I will continue to wish I could change them. Or could have. Oh, well, yeah, could change them. I don't see how pretending this is back to the future uh, with one event impacting others so drastically is going to help. I fucked up, I was wrong, and I will continue to feel bad. The end. Edit. I know I'm probably wrong in my above statement. I'm reading a book on karma, which has similar ideas to what OP said. More the author of the original thing that I'd read. Just can't live with my regrets. It's painful. You did the best with the tools you had back then. The fact that you know it was wrong now shows you have changed. And potentially also grown. You know, even though it is difficult to say whether you've grown or not, because, um, you know, how do you determine that? You know, how could you say? Well, I also want to point out, um, we, it is interesting, like, if you say, okay, I, I've grown in, in, in that way, in this way, and whatnot, you know, I've learned something, I've lived, I've whatever, but, you know, how to, to what are you comparing it to and and in which way do you think growth is you know isn't growth just the way in which you see life right now you know if you have i don't know i mean if you have smoked before like i don't know just three uh, years ago and now you're i don't know just taking fucking math or some shit you've always grown, you know, you know what I mean, like, you've grown in, in a bad way, if you think that it is a bad way, but you've also grown in a good way, when you think that it is good for whatever the fuck reason, you know, on the other hand, if you've just, I don't know, gained 10 pounds of muscles, you will, you know, have physically grown as well, but you have also grown, you have progressed, but maybe even in a bad way, because initially you maybe, or in 10 years, you don't like it anymore. And you think, well, what have I done? So I don't know, like in the end, it is all up to how we see things, you know, our attitude towards things and our perceptions and things. Like it, it's pretty difficult. It's actually pretty difficult to, I don't know, like, like obviously feeling good and being happy might be one of the things to really strive for you know in, in terms of growing that it makes sense and i think it is always going to make sense you know but thinking about the future and expecting okay if i just make even more money i've grown and, and it is good you know I, i'd say the goal then or the end there isn't nearly or well actually isn't meaningful at all but the progress of, of doing so, which can give you meaning, which can give you something to do, which can kind of uh, lead your way out of boredom, and so on and so forth, this might be um, important, you know, this might be good. Anyway, I do want to go through more from the Stoicism subreddit. I do feel that people are really, uh, um, you know, first of all, really active, which is something that I like to see, but also... Um, I mean, this post was really, 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 really helpful for probably quite a lot of people, but also um, in terms of letting a discussion happen, you know, or letting that be a discussion and just having people discussing a thing, you know, people that are kind of similarly interested in a topic and they can talk about that, which is amazing and it creates connection and yeah, I appreciate it. Today, my mother was diagnosed. Elevator pitch for religious stoicism. Not feeling connected to friends. How to deal with narcissism. Death is part of life and I'm tired of pretending it isn't. Tell me your favorite realization whilst learning about stoicism. What's worked for you and what practices you do? I'm intrigued. Revisit your expectations for yourself and assess, and assess whether they are realistic. 50 very short rules for good life from the Stoics. I wonder. I'm just going to go through it. Is there somebody commenting? No. Nobody did. But yeah, um, it is a medium post. 
What the fuck is actually going on there? What are people doing? You probably can hear it, but it is insane. The best pieces of wisdom gathered from a body of work that spans 2,000 fucking years. Uh, so there's actually 50, well, more or less quotes. And we're gonna see, not even quotes, but really incredibly short sentences. The first one, focus on what you can control. The second one, you control how you respond to things. The third, ask yourself, is this essential? The fourth, meditate on your mortality every day. Fifth, value time more than money and possessions. You are the product of your habits, which is the sixth one. The seventh, remember you have the power to have no opinion. The eighth, own the morning. Nine, put yourself up for review, interrogate yourself. The tenth, don't suffer imagined troubles. The eleventh, try to see the good in people. And I don't want to end with this one. Try to see the good in people. At least try. You know, you don't always have to see the negative. You don't always have to assume the negative. It is fine. It is fine to see the good and expect people to do good and to be of good reason, I guess. So try to see good in people. Try to see good people. Try to see the people good. Gonna see you the next time. Bye bye.